Hi everybody, Queen Bee here. Welcome back to the channel and to more subsistence. In this video, we're going to be covering how to survive day one in subsistence. It's a brutal and testing survival game that doesn't lead you by the hand. So this video will be packed full of everything that you're going to need to know to survive and set yourself up for thriving in this great indie survival game. Whether you're playing alone or with friends, you pit your wits against AI hunters, rogues, the harsh wilderness and animals. This video will focus on surviving day one, early game priorities, tips and tricks. So if you don't want to end up like this, then keep watching. Don't forget that if you like the video and find it a little bit helpful, please consider liking it and subbing to the channel. Now, before we get into the gameplay, we're going to have a quick look at some of the basic settings. I'd recommend you check out the keyboard settings as well, just in case there's any key bindings that you want to rebind. Um, you're going to play as either a male or a female character, and you can have up to five save games. You can play single player or co-op and the game now supports dedicated PvE and PvP servers. There are three main settings that we're going to look at. Game difficulty, hunter behaviour and seasons. For game difficulty there's going to be three settings. Easy, normal and hardcore. Easy predominantly reduces the numbers of predators in the game. Normal is a standard difficulty setting with a challenging amount of predators. A bit of a harsher penalty for dying in the game but you can respawn and continue. Now in hardcore, the gameplay in this mode is the same as normal, but you only have the one life. If you're new to the game, I'm gonna recommend you play on either easy or normal. Uh, with this game, there's no shame in playing on the easy mode while you get to grips with the mechanics. And many seasoned survival gamers will confirm this. I personally like to play on normal so that I have a level of challenge but can respawn without the penalty of, um, of of one life, especially since I record and publish my gameplay. Now, the next setting is Hunters. Hunters and Rogues are the AI that spawn in later in the game after you place down a specific structure called the Base Command Unit. We're not going to be covering the placement of that in this episode, but we are going to have a look at the settings now the hunters spawn in to set locations and build bases. These are random with each different game. Um, and you can raid these bases and, uh, and loot them. Rogues will move randomly around the map during the game and their locations will vary from day to day. You can choose to play with hunters and rogues enabled or not. And I know a fair few players who have hundreds of in-game hours who have never faced a hunter at all. They've never played with hunting, uh, hunters enabled. So again, there's three settings. There's normal, uh, which is revenge and periodic attacks. So they'll periodically attack your base and they will retaliate when you attack them. Only revenge attacks is, on, they will only attack your base if you've already attacked them. And no attacks is, is they will not attack you. They will spawn into the world and you can still attack their base and raid them. My personal preference on this one is only revenge attacks. I find that on normal, it's a bit of, of a battle for resources, especially mid game due to having to repair your base from damage that they cause. So revenge only gives me a little bit more breathing room, a little bit of control over when they're going to attack. And it still lets me have the fun of them attacking my base when I want. Now, lastly, we'll look at season season lengths. Um, now, there are four seasons in the game: spring, summer, autumn, winter, and year length settings. Now, these vary from twenty four days to three hundred and sixty five days per year. And in addition to being able to set your season lengths or your year length, you can choose what month you start on. The default starting month is March, and I suggest you stick with it because uh, it allows you to go through the whole of spring, whole of summer, whole of autumn before you hit the harsh winter. If you're new to the game or are struggling, I'd suggest you go no less than 120 day years. 
most definitely start in March, which will give you the full um, three months to prepare for the harsh winter. And I'd also add that I know many players are really, really enjoying the immersion of playing the full 365 day year. Once you've chosen your settings, you're ready to start. Um, and for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to assume you've set hunters to enabled, you're on normal or easy mode, and are relatively new or new to the game. So, first we're going to spawn into a, a random location on the map. It differs from, um, from game to game. When you start, you're going to spawn um, with a steel axe, a glow stick, a bandage, water canteen, light pants, a pistol, eight rounds of ammo, an apple and some matches. You need to know that there's no safe zone in the world, so from the first moment you spawn in, you're going to have to be on your guard. With that in mind, first action is going to be select your rifle, uh, your pistol, press R and reload. It doesn't pack much of a punch, but your aim is going to be to not use it. So you also have a map. Now when you spawn in, your map is dark. If you press M, you can see that none of the map is exposed other than the area that you've spawned in. This will um, uncover more as you, as you continue to explore. There is a way to currently mark item areas on the map, for example your base location etc. But um, you can kind of check in with the map when you see certain um, locations like a, a lake. Just have a little bit of a look at the map and, and work out where they are, what they look like as a point of reference. Your day lengths are set, you can't adjust them and you don't have a watch to keep try a track of um, day length. But you can keep a track of your day lengths by looking out for the sun. If the sky is an overcast you'll be able to see the sun, it rises and sets in the same locations. A quick glance at the sky will show you what time of day it is. You'll soon learn to judge how much time you've got left um, of the day. Always keep an eye on the sky or else the next thing that you know the sun's going to be setting, you're miles away from your camp and you're going to be a little bit screwed. Next we're going to have a quick chat about death. Lovely subject. If you die in subsistence you're going to respawn on a new random area in the map without your loot. Your loot bag will be marked with a skull and available for a short period of time in game before disappearing. If you exit or reload that game um, the, the skull will be gone. Now when you find your bag you will have lost some resources. How much you lose depends on what setting you're playing on whether it be easy or normal. As soon as um, any storage crate is built you will spawn in with the minimum survival kit. So this means no pistol. So leave placing a storage crate until the very last moment on your first evening. So first thing after you've reloaded your pistol that you're going to try not to use um, is, is you want to get chopping a few trees. I always make sure I craft up a campfire as my first priority. Um, I can't stress how important a campfire is going to be your first night. Temperature is a thing. The temperatures plummet at night time. You don't want to get cold. This will affect your health, which will affect your stamina. And you're also going to be needing to cook food on the campfire to replenish your protein um, up to the max, ready for the next day. Now you've got protein, you've got water, you've got fruit and veg. These all need to be kept in tip-top shape or they will affect your health and stamina. Without stamina you can't outrun the predators and without health you simply won't survive. Before we look at crafting um, the essentials, what, what we need to craft on day one and in what order, we're going to take a quick peek at what animals you will encounter in the game. There are essentially three kinds of animals in this game. You've got the passive, you've got the aggressive and what I call the passive aggressive animal. Now the passive animals are those that are never going to hurt you, they will always run away from you. They're the rabbits, the chicken and the deer. There's also fish, they won't technically run away but they are passive, <laughs> they're not going to launch themselves out of the lake and start attacking you. 
the aggressive animals are the the hunters the ones that you really need to be aware of and um and keep an eye out for are the wolves the bears and the cougars now the bears and the wolves will spawn in all over the map the cougars will only spawn into set areas on the map and only after you've placed that base command unit so once you've placed your base command unit they will be active for hunting and also for hunting you the one animal that I refer to as the passive aggressive animal is the moose. Now, for the most part, it will run from you. When you're spawning in in March and it's spring and you come across a, a moose, unless you engage it, unless you shoot at it and attack it, it will run away from you. Um, however, shoot it, attack it, and it will come at you with a bull, like a bull in a china shop. There's also one season in autumn which is uh it triggers the rutting season at that point it will not run away from you if it sees you it's going to go for you so do be aware of that now i'll go into animals and hunting in a lot more detail in another video but for the purpose of this video all you need to know with the following early game especially day one you want to focus on hunting the passive animals the chickens and the rabbits specifically the chickens because you're going to want to use their feathers to craft into arrows so that you can hunt more chickens and more rabbits um you may do a little bit of fishing as well but definitely up on that priority my focus is always the chickens you must avoid aggressive animals at all cost that pistol is going to do sod all damage it is not worth getting into a death spiral where you're constantly being attacked respawning um it's simply not worth it and then next animals have levels one to three so this is for the wolves the bears the cougars the moose they all spawn in and if you hover over them you'll see like a little green bar and it will say if you're close enough it will say how many health po hit points they've got and it will say what level they are three being the strongest level one being the weakest they can level up beyond three that happens when an animal kills either you or a hunter it will level up so a three can become four can become five and the more the higher up they are the more hit points they've got the harder they are to kill um so do be aware of that next predators always give one growl as a warning and a second time they growl it's louder and a bit more bit, it sounds different and you need to be listening out for that a, you'll often hear a growl before you see the predator first growl they they will they will they will stay on the spot they won't move towards you but the second growl they will start to track you maybe even run after you so just always be listening by the end of day one, your aim is as follows. You will have crafted a platform, a storage chest, a bow and arrows, maybe a fishing rod and tackle, a campfire, and you'll have gathered enough food for the night to sustain yourself for the day that follows and wood for the fuel for the night. Most importantly, you'll have found a safe spot to camp. To achieve this from the second you spawn in, you need to be looking around your surroundings you, you need to be exploring you need to be um, gathering whilst being aware of your surroundings and predators you're going to want to harvest resources and search as many crates as you can find there are four types of crates um, there's locked crates which you won't be able to unlock yet ammo crates health crates building crates you will find some of the resources that you need for day one in these crates but not all of them and you will also find other resources that you won't need on day one but you will need later down the line and you are going to want to be the mother of all hoarders you're going to want to loot everything you can and keep it between harvesting and looting chests you're going to be able to gather the following resources um, which will enable you to craft what you need now the three main elements in terms of resources nails in the early game the only place you can get your nails from is the various chests dotted around the map you're going to need to gather a great amount of these for day one and this means running around um 
searching as much as you can. Now, there are some tips to being able to spot chests if you're having difficulty. Get onto some high ground, take a scout of your surroundings. You can see them from far off. Um, and make sure not to jump down from a height like I've done, um, or you're gonna you're gonna either die or break a leg. Fiber, um, now that is all around you, but notoriously difficult for new players in the game to spot. Fiber can be crafted into cordage, one of the most essential crafting ingredients throughout the game. You're going to occasionally find find cordage in chests, but the by far the best way to find it is out and about in the game. Just as you're running around, you will see it uh, spawned in on the ground. Now, at first it might be hard to spot, but there are a few tricks. And as you run around and you become more familiar with these tricks and, and, and what fibre looks like, you're going to find it easier and easier. You'll learn that under some circumstances, it's much harder to see fibre up close. It's Easier to spot if it's like off on the left hand side or the right hand side, not directly in front of you or in the distance or on the horizon. And another great place to spot it is on the beach or what, or in what I call the old country, which is one of the original places on the map where the foliage is much greener. And the fibre plants seem to be like kind of pop out because they're a different kind of green. Now you're going to need wood. Wood is crafted into planks and sticks. And you can you can chop your wood from any tree on the map. Now there's three main types of trees. Three log trees which are, are narrower. The four log trees look a bit more substantial. And the six log trees are the whacking great big trees that you see in various locations on the map. In addition to six logs, the six log trees give you one grub per tree and this gives you protein. It's also a crucial ingredient to being able to craft fishing tackle. So at all costs, avoid eating them, keep them for your tackle. You're going to want to follow your ABCs and always be crafting your day short. Crafting takes time and preparation is your key. So from the second you start your day and you start looting and gathering, um, I start um, I craft my campfire and then I start crafting my resources into planks, sticks, cordage and then so on. I, I don't craft the platform and the storage crate until the end of the day before I'm about to set up my camp. After I've crafted the campfire I will craft up a bow and arrows um, and we'll, we'll look at this a little bit more later on. And now coming to food and water, as I mentioned before, there's three bars that you need to keep topped up to ensure your health and stamina remain at max. Now these run on a bit of a traffic light system, green for good, red for bad. Very straightforward to be able to see what's going on. Um, and they always remain in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. You need to make sure that you keep your overall hunger bar at max. This doesn't always mean that you have to keep your protein, fruit and veg and water fully topped up although I try to, to make sure that it is all topped up at night that I completely max it out for the day because that enables you to run for longer to 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 go without topping it up for longer you don't have to worry about it so much during the day now with regards to protein you're going to want to five small game to fill your protein right up now the absolutely best way to do this is, as I've said already, hunting chickens. Chickens give you feathers, feathers help you craft valuable arrows for hunting. But if you struggle with bow, the bow and arrow or getting the resources for the arrows, you can instead opt for getting a fishing rod on day one over a bow and arrow and spending your evening and night fishing for your supper. Only consider crafting up a fishing rod However, if you've been harvesting these six log trees, because if you haven't, then you're not going to be in a position to craft up tackle. And you can't fish without a bit of tackle. I go for, if I'm going for a fishing rod um, and I'm going for a, a night of fishing to, to fill my stomach on day one, I will always make sure I've got five tackle just in case all I can catch are small fish. Now, fruit and veg, there's so many fruits and veg that can be gathered from the ground, from the lakes and the ponds and from crates. Now, if you're starting in March, um, you're always going to start with day one with an apple. 
and you can find more apples and blueberries in the crates. You can also find blueberries, carrots, onions and potatoes on the ground and in the water you can find kelp. There are other food sources that you can find on the map but those are the ones that you're going to really see when you spawn in in March and you keep an eye out for. My suggestion would be gather whatever you find, eat your apple, eat blueberries but save your carrots, onions and potatoes for turning into seeds for growing later in the game. I'll always recommend that you spend a bit of day one kelp diving in the lakes. Make sure you have a bit of a look around, make sure there's no predators because they can enter the water and they can outswim you and they will kill you in the water. But if it's safe to do so, jump into, into the water source. You're going to want to have a bit of a swim around and you're going to want to, um, you, you'll see these little kind of green bushes in the water. Those are your kelp. You can get a really good stash from a couple of, a, a few minutes kelp diving and um, since kelp is also, it's not only edible, but it's it's used in crafting antidotes, you're going to want to make sure that you've got a good stash. Lastly, we look at water. When you start, you have one canteen and it is full of pure water. Now, water purification is a total and utter thing in subsistence. And if you forget to purify your water and you accidentally drink it, you're going to get an infection. Now, on the subject of infections, they are seriously limiting and dangerous especially early game L and later on in the game it's not so bad because you'll have the resources you'll have an antidote um, or the resources to be able to craft an antidote if you can just take that antidote that will fix it right up but early game they have been the end of of many a rage quit um, <laughs> game so you can get infections from, as I've said, drinking unpurified water, um, getting uncooked meat. You stand a chance of an infection from an animal attack if you survive the attack. Um, or or from, from butchering an animal and not washing your hands. Infections will set your stamina and health to half measure for the duration of the infection, which is seriously restricting, can result in avoidable early game death when you can't outrun an animal an infection also doesn't clear up if you die and respawn so don't try the good old kamikaze routine it won't work you'll still respawn with the infection and it can only be cured with an antidote now to make an antidote as as well as the kelp um, and another resource you're going to need to hunt one of the larger animals to obtain a liver liver drops aren't guaranteed so you could find yourself needing to kill numerous animals to find a liver. This can re result in an endless loop of deaths and perma infection, and it is so, so recommended that it's best to avoid this at all costs early game until you're more established and prepared. So next, I'm going to have a quick look at bows and fishing rods. My personal goal is um, crafting both bow and arrows and a fishing rod and some tackle by the end of the day. Now, this is my measure of a really good first day. I'll have crafted um, both of those up. I'll have a, a set of arrows. I'll have a set of tackle. And for me, that that's, that shows that I've, I've had a good resource gathering day. And yeah, it's just a, a personal kind of challenge that I set myself. However, you do only need one. You can choose one or the other. But um, you're really going to be wanting to pri to set yourself up for the best. You're going to want to prioritise the bow. Because unlike the fishing rod, it means that you can hunt chickens. They'll in turn give you meat and feathers. Feathers allow you to craft more arrows. You'll often get lucky and find an arrow or a feather in the chest if you find a feather. One feather, two sticks, two nails, two arrows. That's what they craft. Um... So the worst case scenario, you can if you can't find an arrow or feathers in chests, you can actually catch chickens by hand. But to do this, you're going to need a full bar of stamina. You've got to be very aware of your surroundings. You're going to want to do it in quite an open space because chickens will lead you towards predators. They are programmed to make a beeline towards a near wolf or bear. Um, so you're going to want to be aware of that. You're going to want to be trying to catch the chicken, um, 
running and then like every few steps you're going to be wanting to jump in the air which kind of slow it makes the chicken think you stop running and they slow down but as you're running and you're focusing on the chicken you're also going to be needing to keep an eye in the distance so it is a bit of a skill um you can learn it over time but i wouldn't say it's a, a and like if you're just starting the game i wouldn't recommend <laughs> catching a chicken if you can avoid it so do be checking out those crates checking out um as many crates as you can with the hopes of getting an arrow or a feather but a push push comes to shove you can catch a chicken don't try catching rabbits though that is just a pointless futile ex exercise on the subject of rabbits they do give you cloth which is used for crafting and med medical items but day one just ignore them focus on the chickens it's all about the chickens and their feathers now um another thing to note about about arrows is that they are recoverable if they don't hit their target if they hit their target they're spent they're used you don't get them back if they hit the ground or a tree or something then they are recoverable however they do sometimes break you'll hear a big crack let's say you accidentally hit a rock then 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 that's going to be the case if you're struggling with a bow then i've got a couple of tips um get as close as you can to the chicken a bit of practice will let you know the relative distance then i always aim at the animal and then just raise my bow just above it just so there's a small amount of air between the uh, where you're aiming with the arrow and uh and the actual animal itself then let rip and it should reach its target just fine with <laughs> with rabbits i actually aim just above the ears and take them out that way now you can practice as well on a tree you can aim at the tree shoot your shoot your arrow it will stick in the tree you can retrieve it you can just have a little bit of a practice there but if you still st struggle with your aim um, and you think it's going to be a challenge to to get those five chickens on day one, then I would always consider, I would always say, go for the fishing rod. If you craft up a fishing rod, like five tackle for the first night, spend a bit of time fishing in the lake um, for your protein fix, as we've already discussed, that will enable you to to get the food that you need to be able to top everything up and have good health and stamina for day two next we're going to have a look at um safe places to camp on night one now there are numerous locations that are safe on your first night you're going to want to camp somewhere safe as possible from predators you won't be prepared enough for tackling a bear if he decides that he wants to eat you uh, my personal choice um is is never to decide on a base location on day one but to pick a safe camping location from where I can explore for a few days, gather resources, and then over those few days, I look around, I decide where do I want to actually set my base up. Something to note, if you've watched any of my videos, my series, I often set up night one in the middle of a big lake. I, I swim out, last thing, I put down a platform, which currently they float on the lake. They don't need to anchor to anything. And, um, and that's that's how I keep safe and I, I spend a bit of time fishing even though I've caught some chickens however the dev um in his most recent update he made an announcement that in the future and not too far in the future structural integrity is going to be introduced into the game and that would make my lake camping um obsolete it would it would mean that it would be impossible to do um to do that on night one so i'm going to suggest the method i used to use before i did that and i'll be using that method in future series so if you know the map you're going to know where the safe spots are but if you're new to the map this means that as you're running around the map during the day you're going to want to just keep an eye out for a good location to spend the night you're going to want to be by a water source so you can fill up your canteen purify your water and get prepared for the next day so if you spawn in on the map and you can't see water, keep exploring until you do. There's now many water sources on the map. 
And if you explore long enough, you're going to come across a river, a pond or a lake. So once you find a river, a pond or a lake, um, my suggestion would be if you find a river, follow it down. It will lead you to a lake. Um, and the reason I would say that is you can't fish in a river. Find uh, like a lake or a pond. Look around for some big ass rocks, some some tall rocks, ones that you can actually safely climb up on top of. There are a number of them uh, dotted around the 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 um the map, and on top of that rock is where I would suggest you set up camp. Now, if you decide you don't want to or you get caught short, you can just place your base on a beach or, or something like that. That's perfectly fine, but you're going to want to have a look. You're going to want to have a look around and make sure that the predators, that it's free from predators. Wolves will run away. If you are running towards your base and you jump onto your platform, wolves will turn tail and run. Bears won't. Bears will destroy your platform and then dis destroy you. So always up on a rock is best. So you can still make it to the water whilst remaining safe at night. You're going to want to spot those. Have a look at your map, work out where you are, keep a mental note of that, and then work your way back there in the evening. So next we're going to have a little bit of a revisit um, to crafting, in particular crafting priorities. Now, my personal crafting order is as follows. Straight away, I'm going to craft up my campfire. I know that I need a campfire. There's no debating that. So the second I come in to the game, I get about crafting up a uh, campfire. As soon as I have enough resources to craft up a bow, that's what I craft up next. Now, for a bow, you're going to need fibre. You're going to be needing sticks. And we're going to get that bow crafted up. And we're going to use the very first of our nails to craft up some arrows. We will probably find um, a feather or two or an arrow in a crate. But you're going to need more. You're going to need a minimum of five arrows on day one. Um, so that's what you're going to do. Get your arrows crafted up. While we're doing all of this, we're crafting any additional logs into planks, any additional fibre into cordage, and we're busy looting crates for nails. Now, there's no guarantee that at the end of the day we're going to have enough to craft up a platform and a storage chest. So what I do, I don't bother to craft those until the last, last moments in the day. Once I get to where I've decided I'm going to camp for the day, for the night, I will then look at crafting a platform and a storage chest. But only if I have enough to craft a storage chest will I craft a platform. The reason for this is as follows. It was different when I was camping out on the lake. Obviously, I needed a platform either way. But if you're camping out on top of a rock, you can place your campfire directly on that rock. In order to place your storage chest, you're going to have to have a platform. That needs to go on your platform. It's the only way you can pl place it. So if you have enough to craft a platform but not a storage chest, there's no point in crafting a platform just to place it on top of a rock. So do wait. Craft up, by all means, planks and cordage because you're going to need them at some point. But wait until the end of the day. Assess what resources you need to craft the both of them. If you've got enough to craft a platform and a chest, do so. If you haven't, then keep your resources um, until you've got enough and then, then do that. Now, next we are going to have a look at running. Depending on how much you run around during the day, and if you're new to game, we've already had a look at the fact that you're going to need five game or, or fish to top your protein bar right up. As for running, I pretty much run everywhere. <laughs> but this is a case of do as I say and not as I do. Um, I suggest that for, for you, especially if you're new to the game, you put a restriction on running. Only run in open spaces where you can see that there are no predators around. If you've got a specific reason, such as there's an open space and you see a crate on the other side, then go for a run. But preserve your stamina for the moments that you need it. Predators are dangerous, and if you are not used to them or the stamina bar, you can very easily end up running into a predator, 
triggering it to run after you and then you can't run, outrun it because you don't have the stamina to do so. If you've got a full bar, uh, a, a green bar of stamina, it doesn't matter if that predator starts to run after you, you will outrun it. But if you haven't, then it's so easy to trigger them and to end up on the wrong side of death. They do have a warning system. They've got two distinct growls, very different. The first one is a straight up warning. If they growl, um, they don't move. The wolf will stand and sniff the air. The bear will stand on its hind legs and look around. If you stop moving, some, I often stop, crouch, and then back straight away. They won't follow you. If you get any closer after this sec this first growl, the second growl will then be triggered and they will start to stalk you. They'll start to walk away. They'll start to walk towards you. Now, if you're far enough away, this will only be at a walk. And with your stamina, you can just create enough distance. They will de-aggro and you'll be fi fine. But if you're not paying attention and you run close enough to them, you trigger them to chase after you if you've been running around the map stamina will have taken a hit and you will quite frankly be screwed so top tip try not to run um, don't do as I do do as I say now we've pretty much covered the day one basics spawn into the world you start looting resource gathering crafting material um, you you get the necessities to survive your first night covered settings what you need to do what you avoid doing at all costs places to camp where to get food and a little bit extra on top of that now next we're going to have a look at some basic tips that um will will, will help you with this game and then after that i'm going to have a look at your first night priorities right tip one very crucial we've just looked at that when you hear a bear or wolf growl stop back up walk the other way don't thread the needle and walk between two wolves and bears even if the distance seems okay it's not worth the risk you can outrun most things with a full bar of stamina but it is not worth it tip two do not go into any action if it isn't safe or if you're unsure some crates and small game are located next to predators and if you're certain then that you can safely reach them without triggering a predator don't go there walk away there is always another chicken rabbit or crate just around the corner in much safer circumstances next tip is to collect everything you find in crates and on the ground every single resource has a use and the more you gather from the start, the better prepared you will be for in later game, even if you're not using it early game. Another tip, rabbits and chickens, don't shoot them with a pistol. It used to be that you could shoot them with a pistol. You could then loot their carcass. You'd get your feathers that way. That's not possible now. If you shoot a chicken or a rabbit, it will just destroy the meat. You won't get feathers or cloth. You'll get um, inedible meat and the only thing you can do with that is let it rot down. Another tip, keep your ashes from the very first moment that you kind of start with the campfire. Ashes will be needed as fertiliser for plants and crafting. When you start using them, they run down so fast. So start stockpiling them right from the moment you, you, uh, you start your campfires kelp dive it's a great way to support you through veg requirements and also crucial for crafting antidotes you're not going to be wanting to uh to start kelp diving when you're half stamina half health and infected so so do try and get a little bit of a stockpile you'll also see that there's metal ores dotted around the map and sandstone in the water um do not bother with these. Don't use a hatchet to gather them if you don't have a pickaxe. It takes too long, it gives you less resources, and it damages your axe. So don't go there. Start in March. We've said it already right at the beginning of this. Start in March and set your days as long as possible. If you are new to the game, you are going to need it. Now, until you set up a BCU, 
you will need to rely on your map, local surroundings, landmarks for navigation to support you to and from your base. Stay aware, keep an eye. Remember every um, significant point of interest that you pass. That will help you find your way back home. Once you place a BCU, it will be marked. As you look in your field of view, you'll see a little symbol which will identify your base. But placing your BCU too soon is going to make hunters spawn in, rogues spawn in on the map. And you're not going to be wanting to deal with that until you've crafted up a basic, proper, secure base. Lastly, this game is a grind and it's brutal and testing, but just remember that, that that is part of the challenge and the fun. I would also say, you know, if you feel like restarting, let's say you get caught in an infection spiral or, you know, you, you find yourself dead, um, half, but it's evening, you've just been killed, everything's on the other side of the map, you're on day one. Then just restart. There's no shame in restarting. Um, don't just just keep grinding and getting frustrated. Give yourself a fresh start. I died so many times, did so many restarts when I first started playing this game. Um, and every playthrough I I survived a bit more, I learnt a bit more, became a bit more cautious, a bit more understanding of the game. So so don't be afraid to do that restart to wipe everything and give it another go. That's the tips and tricks for the first evening. You're, you're going to want to focus on a few things. As the sun sets, you're gonna to need to find a really good spot to set camp for the night, high up or out in the open with clear lines of sight. If you've found your perfect base site, great, but don't feel it has to be. You can do a temporary site and use that to explore from for a few days while you decide on your base location. You've found your location, you're going to place your platform, your storage and your campfire. To do this, you're going to pop your uh, placeables in your hotbar, select the the corresponding key, and uh, and then you can you can use you can use your mouse to place the item. Once you place your campfire, you need to open it, drag and drop the matches across and some logs, and then press ignite. If you don't put the logs in it's gonna go out too quick and you've wasted your mass matches and that <laughs> that's something i've done before and it's so frustrating butcher up your chickens um and cook them up on the fire keep an eye on them because there are various statuses there's like raw partly cooked cooked and then burnt and when it burns you get far less bang for your buck so do keep an eye on them the second they're cooked Take them out of the fire, eat them up, drink your fill of water, make sure it's purified. If you're close to a water source, go refill your canteen and purify a canteen ready for the, the next day so you can keep it on you. Ignore the tutorial and don't craft your base command unit up. Do not do that. Don't want to craft it until you've identified your base location, built a base with four walls and a roof. The first night I'll generally focus on crafting up a few things. If I haven't done so already and I can, I'll craft up a, uh, a, a fishing rod and some tackle. I'll craft up a pickaxe um, and if I've got enough resources, I'll craft up a shotgun. This will rely on you having four cloth in order to do that. Cloth comes from rabbits and since you shouldn't have been hunting rabbits on day one, you would only have found any cloth that you've got in ch in crates. So it's it's not a given that you're going to be able to craft that. If you can, it's a bonus, but don't worry if you can't. You will, however, want to prioritise this from day two onwards um, because it's your most effective weapon against predators. So, um, so, so just bear that in mind. If you do have the resources spare then start crafting up extra platforms walls ready for their base for the base and chuck them in your storage make sure your inventory is nice and empty you might want to keep a couple of blueberries on you your basics your axe your pistol your bow and arrow um and uh and your water um maybe take a bit of protein around with you like maybe one chicken if you've got got that left over and, and can afford to do that 
but um, make sure that inventory is cleared out, ready for looting the next day. And, uh, and that, as I say, it's a wrap. We've covered everything you need to know about how to survive day one and early game in subsistence. I'm going to be making some more tutorial videos for this game, including base locations, hunting, building priorities, and so on. So do keep an eye out and don't forget to check on my current series on my channel. I'm going to pop a link up to that at the end of this video. I do hope you've enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Feel free to, to pop any comments in the comments section and ask anything you want to. I'm always here to help. If you found it helpful, do consider supporting the channel by leaving a like. And if you're new and you want to see more subsistence videos, don't forget to sub to the channel and click that notifications button. Until next time, guys, do stay safe and take care.